just let's just do that. Okay. Hypothetical, hypothetical here, just just for kicks and giggles. All right. Good morning. Good morning. We are talking about abortion. Coming up next. So I'm confused. Confused about many things. Confused about people's motives and desires. Most of all, confused about whom people fear. God or mankind? Why do so many people seem to fear others and not the Lord, especially in this debate? Well, what exactly am I talking about? I'm talking about the bill that was tried to be passed by a GOP-run Louisiana legislature that would have criminalized abortion in the state, effectively banning it completely. It was HB 813. And yet the GOP governor, who's a so-called pro-life politician, Governor Edwards said that the bill criminalizes mothers, restricts reproductive reproductive care, and violates the U.S. Constitution. Okay. Well, but it doesn't, though, because the U.S. Constitution doesn't have Roe in states' rights. All states could do this. We're 50 states, right? We're not a federation or something like Russia or Germany where we're a single country. We're a united States, 50 different ones, 50 different governors, and so on. Further still, the bill would not have had any criminal actions taken against women who have already had abortions. It wasn't even in there. Could it have? Yes. Did it? No. But where there is no law, there is no transgression. Romans 4, 15. So yes, it's wrong in the eyes of God, but it's not wrong in the eyes of the state legislature. Abortion's legal. Conservative Baptist Network stated many and I quote, have weighed in on this. The SBC presidential candidate, Tom Askell, Boyce College professor, Denny Burke, Atlantic columnist, David French, which we'll look more closely at him in a moment, Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary's Land Center's namesake, Richard Land, who used to run the ERLC, by the way, before Russell Moore, and the Conservative Baptist Network steering council members, Shariah Coulter and Mark Ballard. Askell also gave an article by former began Conservative Baptist Network steering council Ronnie Rogers, end quote. And I've actually had Ronnie Rogers and Tom Askell on the program. Hopefully, Mark Ballard, I met him in a conference recently. I was down at the CBN. Nice guy. Some of these folks are right. Some of them are less right and or just wrong. One coming out of uh, WDSU.com says that Louisiana Governor John Edwards signaled he would veto any anti-abortion rights bill that would be debated on the House floor Thursday. HB 813 by North Louisiana Representative Danny McCormick passed favorably out of committee by a 7-2 vote. So it was favorable. Let's let's do this, 7-2. And then it was gutted with any power. It's called the Anti-Abolition of Abortion Bill that poses sweeping changes to women's reproductive rights in Louisiana. This is the article. The bill defines life as being beginning at the moment of fertilization. Okay, not, not, not implantation, but fertilization. So let's just put chattel slavery there. Just, let's just do that. Okay. Hypothetical, hypothetical here, just, just for kicks and giggles. Louisiana Governor John Edwards signaled he would veto any anti-slavery bill that would be debated on the House floor Thursday, HB 813, 14, if you want. North Louisiana Representative Danny McCormick passed favorably out of committee in a 7-2 vote last week. It's called the Abolition of Slavery Bill and poses sweeping changes to slaveholders' rights in Louisiana. The bill defines life of the slave as being equal with other human beings. End hypothetical article. This is modern day slavery, folks. This is exactly what this is. And those who would be anti-slavery today and yet are pro-death or want incrementalism and not abolition of abortion, I dare say, would be lockstep with the slavers of the 1860s using the same types of arguments they use today. Right. What are those arguments? Well, one, we must make slavery unthinkable. Number one. Right. Oh, got to be unthinkable in a just society. Right. After outlawing chattel slavery, the enslavement of African people won't stop slavery. After all, they might say, right? This is the same argument they use for abortion. 
You don't believe me? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Well, here's a snippet from David French, conservative so-called, who never ceases to disappoint regular Christians with his, you know, winsome nuance. David French is a fun guy. Incrementalists aren't in favor of slow change in abortion laws for the sake of slow change, but rather accept attainable change, even when you ultimately hope for greater regulation. And the desire to eliminate, quote unquote, abortion implicitly acknowledges the reality that bans alone won't end abortion. Abortion can only truly end when American culture changes, not just its law, end quote. That from David French's article, which I'll link in the description. Now, again, just hypothetically, let's swap out abortion for slavery. Incrementalists aren't in favor of slavery, quote unquote. Excuse me. Our incrementalists aren't in favor of slow change in slavery laws for the sake of slow change, but rather accept attainable change even when you ultimately hope for the greater regulation. And the desire to, quote unquote, eliminate slavery implicitly acknowledges that the reality that bans alone won't end slavery. Slavery can only truly end when American culture changes, not just its law. Oh, that's good. Glad we didn't have that route. Although we had millions dead during the war between the states. But as the phrase goes, that's hogwash. It's mushy middle, big Eva, squishy nonsense. And David French probably would have had that same argument during the 19th century during chattel slavery, defending the murderous practice and ultimately the murderous practice of the unborn now. A practice that sees one third of women, 33%, who killed their child is in the black community, or if you prefer, highly melanated. And yes, it's an ethnic group because there's one race, not different races, one race, human race, Adam, and then later Noah. Yet that community, the highly melanated people, African descent, make up only 12.5% of the population. So that's three times as many abortions. Margaret Sanger, the Planned Parenthood founder, was a staunch racist and hated black people, hated anybody that didn't look like her, calling them human weeds. Early parts of the 20th century, we saw this over and over again. And what did they do? They strategically put abortion clinics in the poorest parts of town, not because of regulation, not because of bad laws. You hear this argument today, but rather because they hated those people. So they want to go in and eliminate them. And who lives there? The poorest parts of town? By and large, the black community. It's no coincidence, folks. It's not. So back to the SBC, church and stuff in general, Big Eva and all that. The current front runner uh, of the SBC president, Tom Askell, posted a tweet a few days ago on the 13th of May, said SBC versus ERLC. And I quote, SBC has a rogue entity in the ERLC. The messenger spoke loudly and clearly about our commitment to abolish abortion and see equal protection under the law for the preborn children. The ERLC has defined defied the will of the churches who own it. That's the first out of several. I won't look at it anymore. Pretty straightforward, pretty clear. Bart Barber, less so. And he's the other front runner. The question is, why did the ERLC, Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, and 70, 70 other pro-life ministries and organizations want HB 813 stopped? They didn't want it for it. They wanted it stopped. This would end abortion. And they were against it. Well, perhaps money. That's my theory. Perhaps abortion, if it was ended in Louisiana, would then have a cascading effect and legal murder and partiality showing to the unborn would have less to do. The lobby would be smaller. The boogeyman would be eliminated and the fear mongering would diminish and the donor base would give elsewhere. Perhaps, perhaps. But what does the Bible say, right? We know the word of God has something to say about this. Exodus 20, 13, Deuteronomy 5, 17. You shall not murder. Pretty straightforward. Another, when you strive, men strive together and hit a pregnant woman. So her child come out, but there is no harm. The one who hit her shall surely be fined as the woman's husband shall impose on him. And he shall pay as the judges determine. Verse 23 of chapter 21 in Exodus. But if there is harm, then you shall pay life for life. Giving dignity to the baby. The question is for everyone, why do we value born life more than unborn life? Murder in all 50 states is still illegal, yet it still happens, right? So sorry, David French, your argument doesn't work. And many others think that too, right? According to these, according to French and others, these laws are meaningless because, you know, we need to make murder unthinkable. 
We need to have America change. Well, guess what? America's worse because people don't take a stand. We want murder, unthinkable. We want robbery and, and, and all sorts of other things, unthinkable. But murder is a crime and a sin, at least born people. Don't show partiality. It's wrong. God doesn't show partiality. Repent and turn to Christ. Repent and come unto him. You who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, he says. The hope of Christ alone. Jesus is king, right? And again, we've had such a problem with this for so long that we don't know or really see this or really believe it, right? We have, we've had shootings and I, I, I can't cover everything. I really can't. Um, I just don't have time. I wish I did, uh, but I don't. We have the shooting. There was a shooting in uh, New York. It was on Saturday. It's last week. May 11th, I think it was, 12th, something like that, or I don't know, 14th, something like that. It was Saturday before now, whatever day that was. Let's look, just so I know. Uh, Saturday the 14th. The next day, there was a shooting at a church. Now, the 14th, the guy was racist, right? White supremacist. They're all freaking out. And yet, did they do that last month or a month and a half ago with the New York, New York subway shooting? who was a black supremacist. No, they buried it quickly, right? And you look at multiple other mass shootings and it's a mix of people. It's not just, you know, whitey going against, you know, anybody who's darker, blah, 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 hatred. What about the guy who shot up the church? What about the guy who shot up the other church? There was a church in, in Southern California that happened this last Sunday on the 15th. And then also uh, several months ago in Sacramento, is that not hatred towards Christians? What about in a Jewish place? Oh, it's anti-Semitic. What about anti-Christo whatever? What about Christophobic? Do we have that? No. Why? Well, because Christians are you know the majority. No, because they worship Jesus. Well, they're kind of bigoted. Whatever the reasons are, people have their reasons. And they don't like it. So we show these partialities. We show the partiality with the unborn and everything else. It's ridiculous. It's heinous. It's wrong. We should not do it at all god shows no partiality no partiality so the murder of the unborn the rlc david french all these folks should be ashamed of themselves you should be ashamed of yourself why do you think well we need to make this you know incrementalism to make it unthinkable how are you going to do that how how is that going to work because last I checked, the society is far more wicked than it was even 50 years ago. And far more wicked than it was 50 years before that. Of course, that goes with your eschatology and what you believe about that, what's happening, along with everything else. I'm not saying, you know, we go back 100 years or the 1950s and everything's hunky-dory. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm not saying people didn't have sin. And that's all silly. What I am saying is the overall common discourse... You can see it in how people dress, how people talk, how people treat each other on the road, how people just go in. And I mean, people used to put guns in the overhead compartments 50, 60 years ago in airlines. Go on a hunting trip, you put it up there, right? But thank you, Columbine and those wicked fools and the guy who shot up Virginia Tech and the person who shot up this place and the person who shot up the mall, the guy over here and the guy over there, usually all the guys and usually all very corrupted, uh, wicked individuals. But they used to put guns, hunting rifles up in the... Nobody shot anybody in airlines. What? Because society's becoming more coarse. But how is that going to happen, David French? Brent Leatherwood, ERLC. How's that going to happen? How are we going to make society better if we don't stand and say, the murder of the unborn is wrong. Jesus says you can't kill babies. Moses says it. Jesus says it. God's word is clear. You can't kill babies. We need to stop this immediately. You would do that, you would do that with slavery, wouldn't you? Right? You'd do that if we were killing old people. And everybody's, again, up in arms about shootings in subways, grocery stores, and churches in various degrees, depending on what media outlet's covering it. The point is we're showing partiality. So, anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, go ahead and do the whole three-piece special, as my friends like to call it. Like, comment. No, a like, 
sub and a share with a comment. That's what my buddy Jason is over, over there at Dear Well Christian likes to say. Or you call it a four piece special, whatever. Add fries with it. I don't know. Point is, I want you all to be against the world for the sake of the world. Okay. Turn to Christ if you have not turned to Christ. If you don't know the living God, the God who upholds all things by the word of his power, the God who gives human dignity to every single person, not the government, right? No entity, no company, Google, Apple, Facebook, whatever. They don't give human dignity to people. The government, I don't care if it's Trump or Biden or Obama or Bush, they don't give human dignity. The U.S. Constitution doesn't give human dignity. Rather, it merely recognizes what God has already given you have worth and dignity. Even if you're not a Christian, I'm not talking just to Christians. I'm talking to every single human being that's ever lived. Even if you have mental disabilities, even if you have darker skin or lighter skin or you're taller or fatter or whatever, you have human dignity and human worth. I want these pro-life, quote unquote, organizations to actually act like that. Sadly, they're not. May they turn. May they see their folly. I'll take care.